Welcome back to Digger Detecting, guys. Welcome also to a party along the river where we've got five detectorists out here today hunting this ground, the old house site. Uh, we've got Andrew, the father-in-law, running the Vanquish 540. We've got Derek uh, way over the back there with his lovely wife, Natisha, and they're both running Equinox 800s. And we've also got Luke from I Dig That 73 over there talking to David. And Luke is also running the Equinox 800, and I'm sure he's going to be looking for more Florins here today. And we've also got David standing beside Luke, and uh, David is running my Equinox 800. Uh, so look out, a lot of Equinoxes on the ground today. Uh, but basically the whole point of that, the party along the river today, is cleaning up this old house site. Uh, some will remember we are pushed for time now, and this place is up for sale, and that means this paddock and the old school in front are all going to get, uh, all going to get sold off so we need to attack this site as much as possible and get out as many targets as we can from the ground and uh, see if we can't clean it up before it sells off at the end of this month a couple more weeks to go we're lucky it didn't sell there the other week so we've got a couple more weeks to go and we're going to try and smash it as hard as we can today and in future so anyway let's go over let's set up the 900 and uh, let's see what we can do here today so I tell you, it is so good to see everybody out here detecting away and enjoying this site. There is still plenty left to find, and uh, we've started up the Equinox 900 about half an hour ago there, and we've already found a few pennies too, uh, but nothing that I've caught on camera just yet. So that's what I'm going to do now with my back towards the wind. We're going to dig out this uh, next target and hope it bear coin. We do have a few pennies in the pouch already, which is always nice. Remember, we've had over 300 pre-decimal coins coming out from this site, uh, mine and Luke's tally uh, included, so what I've done and what Luke's done. Uh, so, and um, Mr. Florin Magnet over there, what do you got? Six, seven Florins out of here? Seven. And I've got two, so that makes nine Florins from this one site, and not to mention the other silvers. Uh, but we have, as I said, in total done over 300 coins from this one site. Crazy, I know. But uh, look, the proof's in the pudding, the videos are all there, and uh, we've got all the coins laid out at home on the bench, uh, with, with a total and a count up, so, phenomenal. It may, uh, may have even, this site may even top some of my best sites that I've had in the past, I reckon. It may even be up there. Oh no, we hit him, but that's okay, because it's just a bottle top, that one that we're chasing. A mid-70... 73, 74, I seen him jumping around on the Equinox 900 there. So not a coin that time. It's funny too because, uh, you know, you get a good signal and you think, oh, Ripper, that's going to be a coin. I like everything else here. And then you dig it up and it turns out to be a bit of rubbish, which is what I'm noticing a lot more lately. So it just goes to show how great separation the, uh, the Equinox machines have. And uh, the fact that we've been here, what, six times now, this is our seventh, we picked up majority of the coins, but there's still those high targets left to go, which generally are bottle tops. But let's keep going and see if we can find a few more. So Dave's just yelled out, what's a 15 on the Equinox 800, Luke? And uh, look, I said with this site, with its history, it could be anything. It's the best to give it a dig. And Dave got out a little bit of, uh, looks like alloy or, or scrap lead. And uh, not only that though, he happened to manage to uh, pull out a little cracker marble. Now all the, uh, all the holes I've dug here in the past, over the last five or six weeks, we've only found one marble and it was melted. Uh, but that is an absolute beauty. And uh, to come out of the same hole, you know, with the target, uh, metal detectors do not find glass. Uh, that is just a lucky surprise. What a ripper. Well, now it's Andrew's turn. He's just walked over to me and he said, Luke, uh, did you lose something? I lost my marbles. There's one of them anyway. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And this guy is a little cat's eye marble. You can see that little, um, that little uh, green glass injected inside the clear glass. And that is Japanese made, I dare say. A little cat's eye marble. What a ripper. That is, uh, that's marble number two to come out today. Not bad. Awesome. Don't come up on the detector. That's right. Yeah, you don't find glass for the detector. Oh, you a keep... couple of half pennies. Oh, a couple of halves. Yeah. Yep. So there you go. Yeah. Andrew's, Andrew's running the Vanquish today too. Only man on a vanquish. Everybody else is running uh, equinoxes. Yeah. Cool retain. Oh, there you go. Digging out lower numbers. So yeah. what, what what did he come up at? Do you uh, remember? 18, I think it was. 18. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, we're going to do a count up very soon under the tree, and uh, we're going to take a look at what everybody's got, including the two marbles coming out. Yeah. We are having a, having an awesome day so far. Well, Derek's got our next piece for us, and uh, he's brought it over to suss out what it is. And uh, from what we can sort of figure out, I'll just zoom in there. He's got a little sight glass in the front there. If we spin him around there, Derek, 
Uh, the only thing that's really giving it away uh, is the back there. And we think it's the old lens off a camera. Yeah, the old pop-out, fold-out cameras. Uh, next time I do see one, uh, I'm going to take a, better, a bit better look and try and ID this piece. But uh, look, that, that uh, little lens type piece in the middle there, that sort of gives it away. Uh, quite quite uh, being like a camera. So awesome find, awesome piece. And if you do recognise it, be sure to drop a comment below uh, because we'd love to be able to confirm that item. So well done, Derek. Awesome. So how are you going so far, Luke? What do you got there, mate? Florin magnet. How many you got so far today? No florins. Well, guess what? I have a surprise for you. That is a signal that I've found this morning and I've hidden it. Well, not hidden it, but it is hidden. And I'm not going to tell you where it is. And I'm going to dig it out at the end of the day. And I believe it's going to be my florin. So there you go. If you can find it, if you can find it before the end of today, and it's nothing that I've buried, it's something that's in the ground already, if you can find that signal by the end of today, you can have it, because I've left it. But if not, I'm digging it up at the end, and that's going to be my florin. Well, you know, whatever I dig is mine anyway. I know, I know. You better go find that hiding, uh, hidden florin now. <laughs> well, how cool is that one? We've got our next target, and we've found Mary's lipstick. Can you see Mary written on there? I can. And that's, uh, that's Mary's little lipstick tube, and uh, there would have been another piece that slotted up through the guts of that, and this would have just been protecting and sealing the lipstick. So pretty cool. We're not going to know what uh, shade of colour it was, a pretty pink or a pretty red, uh, but sometimes you do find them intact complete, and uh, you, know, you can twist up the bottom or even get your fingernail and push up and uh, still see the lipstick containing inside uh, some hundred years on. It's, uh, it's not usable, obviously. However, you can see what colour it was, which is awesome. So... Let's keep going through the dump, through the trashy area, and see if we can't pluck out a few more cool items. And we have done it. Working our way through the dump there, we have our next target, which happens to be a little thrippence. You can see I've already gave him a bit of a clean up, just for, uh, for special effects. A 1926 he is. I was sort of struggling to read the date there before. But he is a 1926, he looks like a three in the, in the place of a two. How about just an awesome little coin to find? And I think, uh, without talking to everybody else here today, I was uh, speaking to Luke there before, and I said, how are you going there, mate? And he said, a few pennies and a silver, a little thrippence. So I think uh, Luke is the first one to get the silver, but I think I am the second. So that is awesome. 1926, little thrippence, Australian coat of arms design, and he's going to go into the pouch, and we're going to get you on to the next. How awesome. Well, how about that, hey? Two steps away from the last little silver, and in between, what you did not see is we also had uh, another kangaroo penny coming out. Uh, but look at that. We've got our next silver coin. We're starting to go on to the lucky streak now, aren't we? The sun is coming out, and so are the silver coins. And that's not an Australian coat of arms design. That's a little bit later. That's going to be a wheat uh, stalk design. Somewhere around the 1943. Oh, I was going to say four. 1944. And look at that, what a cracker. And we've had quite a few 1944 thrippences coming out from this site so far. So that is just awesome. Another little silver into the pouch. I tell you what, Luke may have got the first silver coin, but uh, we've got number two now, and I think we've taken the lead. How cool. So who remembers the other week where Luke found the, uh, the old salt or pepper shaker? Well, I think Natisha has just found the top of it. How awesome is that? And do you know what? You're dead right. That is exactly the top of the old pepper or salt shaker that Luke found because it's got the ring around the outside. Uh, and if I do a bit of research and Google the picture again that I found last week, I'll throw it up top left corner and give you a look. And you remember Luke's salt shaker? Well, it is an exact, uh, exact match. So that is awesome. You've just found the, uh, the top of the shaker. Shake, shake, shake. Awesome. Well done, Natisha. Rightio, so we've got our next three targets opened up. As you can see, hole number one, or hole number one, that's the plug. Hole number two and hole number three. And not only that, we've got another nice high signal buried underneath the shovel there, which we are about to dig out in a second and give you a look. So first off, uh, what caught my attention was the first plug that I opened up. And look at that. We've got another little penny, another coin from this site. We're in about 400 coins in, in no time at all. Uh, he's been burnt off too. You can see that ashy patina on the coin. Uh, but what caught my eye there, let's just um, sit him beside, is around the back of this plug, look at that. We've got another coin sticking out. A second coin for this one little hole. So we're really on a bit of a coin spill here in amongst the, the rubbish, the trash. That's so how awesome. So we've got two rue pennies coming out from that hole, that one hole. 
And once we shut him over, who knows, there may be another buried in there. Maybe we're just not hitting on it. So there we go, we could have another coin in there. Our second target though, we'll move you along. Our second target be a badge. There you go, I thought it was going to be a, um, a bottle top then. But it looks like an old badge, maybe had an enameling front on it, and maybe he's all worn away. A pity that was not a florin. And so our third target, let's move over. Turn that pinpointer back on. See if we can locate him. He's up in the plug, I think. Oh, listen to that pinpointer blanking out. We're just going to zoom you back out there. There he is, we've got a solid tone in the middle. And so our target might still be in there, I think. Right at the bottom there. Targets everywhere. There's another little one over the back there, which turns out to be a little nail. So into the pouch, we'll clear him out of the hole. Remember, we've still got the next target over in the back there, which we'll just lever up the shovel a bit so we don't lose him. And let's go after this third target first. I don't think it's going to be a coin somehow. I think we're going to get ripped off. Like that. <laughs> So there we go, there is our target. And turn that pinpointer back on. There's still a little bit more down there, which no doubt is probably just more of that toothpaste tube. Which I think that's what it is. Now we can work on getting that out a little bit further, or a little bit more, which we will do in a second. Let's so first, while we've got you on film, let's move over to our fourth target over the back here. <gasps> there it is there, and let's see if it was a coin, I was about to say. Yeah, but look at that, we've got another one, a roo penny, and you've seen it all happen. And so we've got two little half roo pennies out of there, uh, what looks like a florin, I wish it was, but it's not. A little bit of uh, scrap alloy out of there, and then the last one being the full roo penny. So there we go, it's, uh, the coins are still coming out thick and fast from this site, and this one here be a 1944 also, just like those last couple, of, or that last strippance that we got. So just awesome. And look, even though the coins aren't dating that old, you know, it'd be nice to find something back into the 1800s. How awesome is it though, to walk out of here with a, a pouch jiggling full of coins every time, every time. And we've had some great, uh, great days here. So anyway, let's now fill these holes in and uh, we're gonna stop for some uh, something to eat and something to drink. And we're gonna get back and uh, see how much more we can find. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. We've got another target right there right beside where those two little half pennies just come out from. I thought so. And look, this may not be another penny. It may be a bottle top mixed in with all that rubbish. However, as you've seen, you've really just got to dig your way through it. And if it is a bit of rubbish, don't be um, disheartened. Just continue on to the next, because the next one could be a nice little pleasant surprise. So there we go. I think I do too. I think that's part of our lipstick tube. I reckon so. I reckon we're, if we were clever enough to find it in the pouch, I reckon we could match that guy up. Oh, look, we've got him. Just like that handful of rubbish and out he pops. And so there we go. That is definitely the inner of our old lipstick tube. And this is the guy, as I was saying there before, holding all the, uh, all the pretty colour, the red or the pink, and he would have slotted up through there and you would have pulled him out and uh, put him on your lips, make him all pretty. I know nothing about that because I'm a boy. <laughs> but uh, look, I think that's how it works. So I've seen Helena uh, get ready in the in the bathroom before. And I think that's what she does. It puts it on her lips. So <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. That is awesome. The old lipstick tube in amongst the coins and the bottle tops. <laughs> uh, Luke's wondering where this, uh, this uh, target is hiding, where this florin, uh, the signal that I found there before is hiding. And uh, I don't even know if I gave you guys a look. We best uh, get off there sneakily a bit later and show you a look at the target ID and the number uh, because it is a cracker of a signal. And I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping, oh, as I said to Derek and uh, Luke there before and Natisha, I've found my florin already. I just have not dug it up yet. I'm leaving it in the ground for the end of the day. as a bit of a surprise. So that is awesome. Anyway, stop for eat. I stop for a drink and a bite to eat. We're just going to give you a quick look at all these coins though that we've found so far hunting this morning and what else has been coming out from this site, which has just been incredible. I have no doubt we've still got a lot more to go, that's for certain. 
So we've got one little half penny, one, two, three full pennies, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight full pennies, three and four little half pennies, two silvers, nice little buckle, a little religious pendant, which we did not show coming out there before. But look at that, what well, we've got 12, 13, 14 coins uh, for this morning so far. And as I said, and now it is lunchtime. So how's that? We we're just having a bite to eat. David yells out, someone left their florin laying on top of the ground. Oh, they did too. Mate, you have just taken the day. 1957 florin. You win the day. Not yet. You win. <laughs> what, do you, what do you reckon, Luke? Are you a little bit dirty, a little bit seedy right now, mate? And plus, let's face it, you've got so many, you don't really need any more. You could probably give up detecting yeah. for the rest of the year. Close to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. How, how many people have detected around here? Like, I know that uh, Craig and Tracy and myself were detecting just over there. Unreal. <laughs> Equinox 800, Florin Magnet. Jeez. I'm going to have to swap you the 9 for the 8, Dave. <laughs> Awesome stuff, man. Well done. Well, we still have not finished our lunch, but Derek has just brought over the next special piece to show us straight after the florin, and that being an old fob watch backing cover. But not only that, you can see there scratched in the back some initials and uh, a last name, I, I presume, down the bottom. Uh, but what's most fascinating to me at the top is the date. You can see 11 uh, with a bit of a slash and a 5. Oh, get me fat thumb out of the way. 11th of the 5th and I think I can see 37 at the top so the 11th day of the 5th month 1937 and that would date that pretty pretty accurately so wow that is a great piece I found a lot of fob watch backing covers but one with initial uh, initials or anything uh, scratched into there I think just adds such amazing character that is awesome that is awesome I cannot wait to see that cleaned up too Derek that's great well done mate well, we are having a cracker of a day and we are back into it for round two. We've just had a quick bite to eat and uh, back over to the spot where we were pulling all those coins before we stopped there for lunch. And uh, there is another one, another half little rupenny. And not a florin like what Dave just got. Uh, not, a, uh, not a shilling, unfortunately. We are, I would like something a little bit bigger today. Uh, but uh, look, I'm, I'm quite content with all these copper coins coming out. Any coin coming out is awesome. We're still puddling around in the dump too. So all these coins that have been thrown out in the dump is just incredible. So uh, digging through the trash, we will get more treasure. Let's keep cracking along. So just quickly, while Luke is distracted, we're going to take you over and show you where this target is hiding. There's a bit of a sneaky signal under the tree here that I managed to locate before. And if no one digs that up before the end of today, if Luke does not find it, We've, uh, we've got ourselves our florin. I'm certain that's a florin. Uh, we just need to dig him out a little bit later. So anyway, continue on back to the rubbishy area and uh, see how many more coins we can pull out. So back into the rubbish dump with the 900 uh, to see how many more coins we can find. And that be our next good signal. I'm hoping, being such a high one there, I'm hoping that be a florin or a silver in general to help us catch up to David. He's just done amazing finding that florin, and I'm so happy for him because he is normally on the gold, Dave, and normally out in the gold fields, and he does great too. I will say, he is a great detectorist. However, the coin and relic game, it's a little bit different. You know, where you sort of swing low and slow out in the gold fields and listening for those very faint murmuring signals, with the coins and relics, it's a, it's a bit of the other end of the scale. You can swing a bit quicker. Uh, you know, you can avoid uh, some of those trashier targets, you know, discriminated, uh, discriminatory detectors. Uh, you know, you can discriminate out what you don't want to hear and don't want to dig. With a gold detector, you generally dig everything that beeps. Otherwise, you could be missing out on gold. So look, it's a bit of a, a bit of a different learning curve for Dave. I mean, he's a great detectorist. However, it is a little bit of a different learning curve. Uh, but so far, uh, which I had no doubt, he would do so far he's absolutely smashing it and uh, not even with any help from me either look uh, sometimes I take people out and I do give them help and uh, that's fair enough uh, you know they're starting out and they do need a bit of a bit of guidance a bit of help but Dave you know he he knows what he's doing uh, he's been out there for the last few weeks I really just gave him a very quick rundown on the detector uh, but did I, I did not get out in the field and show him any tips or tricks he's done all that himself so he's just doing incredible 
that's a credit to him. So anyway, next coin as we work our way through the rubbishy dump with that little sniper six inch coil, and what a ripper it is too. A 1943, a little Kanga half rupenny, another one for the collection. What's that? 310, 320, 350 coins, who knows? Well over 300 pre-decimal coins coming out from this site though, so far. And I reckon if we keep pushing, we may even make it to 400. So just detecting away, and uh, I look over and I happen to catch Andrew's eye. Oh, I know what you've got. I know what you've got. He was looking a bit, uh, bit sneakish over there, coming over uh, with something awesome to show me. So I flicked the camera on. I know exactly what you've got there, mate. So that would say, presented by the government to the school children of Victoria. Oh, nice. and, and what that is, is uh, that's a, I've got, got it the wrong way around there. Uh, but what that is, is actually part of an old pendant. Uh, so we would have had the, uh, the Queen's, uh, Queen's visit, I think, a royal visit to Australia. And this would have been a part of that medallion. So you'd have the, uh, the round pendant down below, and this would be attached to the top. So we actually found one of these and the pendant to go with it there the other week, uh, which, uh, which I'll throw up top left corner if you've not checked out that video, you'll be able to see one of those coming out as well as the pendant included. What a great find. And uh, once you clean him up, mate, you'll be able to see all the writing and the yeah. detail. Yeah, you, know, cool. you know what you need to do now? Find that pendant. Yeah, yeah, I'll go back to the hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, go see if you can see, uh, snag it. Well done, Andrew. We're on a target with Luke Ooh. and... Uh, He's got a coin. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was going to hit the camera and say, mate, if that's a florin, I helped you pinpoint uh, and target that. Do I get to keep half of it? You can have that, mate. Oh, you're throwing coins at me. Well, how about we split him in half? I love that. Jeez, he's in cracker condition. Look at that. Mm. But, uh, whoops, he's fallen off. Fallen off his perch. Got a 1951 kangaroo penny. Great presentation there, Luke. <laughs> Awesome. I was really thinking that was going to be a, uh, a florin, mate. Yeah, so it just, was a very faint signal. Yeah, just ringing up so high, though. Like on the Equinox 900, it was uh, an 89 and a 90, or jumping right up there. And so I didn't see what it was on the Equinox 800. I'll tell you what, it does not matter, though, because that's another coin out of the ground and a great save. Hey, you better keep the plug. <gasps> Don't ruin the compression. Put, put that in your... Oh, no. <laughs> I was going to say, put it in your pouch. But uh, I just ruined it myself. Awesome stuff, man. Let's keep going. Hey, uh, don't forget your penny. A 45 and a 46 brings us to our next target. Just walking away from Luke and his uh, 1951 kangaroo florin. What I, what I thought it was going to be a florin. Turns out to be a little penny. What a ripper, though. And uh, as said, our next target was a mid-40. I'm not quite sure if he's a sinker or he's a little musket ball. I dare say he's a sinker, though. Look at that uh, Look at that line running around the middle there. The cast line, where he's been joined up and made in two pieces and joined together. So look, if that was a musket ball, I don't think we'd be seeing that line. Even though they were put in, uh, you know, made in a mould, I generally you don't see that at all. So I dare say, once we get home, we'll put this guy through the tumbler. And I think what we're looking at there is a little fishing sinker. And let's face it, uh, we're what... Uh, you know, we're a good way away from the river at the moment. But where the house site used to be, well, it was pretty much smack bang on the side of the river. So you can imagine what uh, the kids were doing every night after school, going and dropping a line in and catching dinner. So awesome stuff. No wonder you find so many fishing sinkers at this house site. Well, let's keep going. Oh dear. All right, we've got our next target. Me and Luke are joking away a little bit still again. He, uh, I think he's walked over this one too. Probably left a bit of rubbish for me to dig out. Oh, look at that. He did too. You knew that wasn't going to be a, a anything good. You, you knew it wasn't going to be a anything good. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Oh, dear. We're having a great day. And uh, the coins are still coming out, even if we are digging a little bit of trash in between. Did someone say another little silver coin? There he is. Another little thrippence. That is triple silver for us today. How magnificent. It looks like he's been through the fire, this one, too. He's quite burnt off and uh, quite uh, got some nasty patina on him. Not much detail left at all, from what I can see. Let's have another gander. Uh, there he is, 1925. Hello there, fella. What have you been doing? Hiding in the dirt all those, all those years. Uh, that is just awesome. And um, to be honest, I didn't expect to find this guy here. Because we're in amongst the bulbs again now. We're sort of on the run of uh, run of bulbs in front of us there. 
and they continue around uh, beside us here. So look, if some remember round one, round two, even round three, we absolutely hammered, absolutely hammered this area where the, uh, where the bulbs were or are and where the garden used to originally be as you led your way up to the house. So <laughs> to be honest, to find that signal there, little thrippence, how has it been missed? I don't know. Uh, so anyway, let's keep going through the garden, through the bulbs, and hopefully we can turn that into something bigger. Well, it's coffee time, and uh, I've got a bit of a surprise in the bag here today. Luke always tells me to bring a coffee cup, and uh, I always forget to bring one. It's not since uh, we were at Trent and Emily's uh, that I've been remembering my coffee cup. But uh, look, we've got something pretty cool here today, and uh, I want to give a massive shout out to Craig and Tracy, who were with us there last week. Uh, Craig is a bit of a whiz on the computer, and the printer, and the scanner. And uh, the other day, going there delivering, funnily enough, delivering to uh, a package to Craig's house. And I caught up with him, and he busted this mug out for me. And I was sitting there watching a video where I found two florins stuck together, uh, hunting out on a sports oval. And uh, one of my favourite sayings, as many will know, is what a cracker, or what a ripper, or even what a beauty, or what a stutter. Uh, so there we go. We've got our own, our very own, coffee cup. And uh, Luke, he's going to do the honours and pour All us right. a coffee. Two sugars and... Two sugars? And one coffee, or... Probably more than one spoon of coffee. What's the ratio there, bud? It looks pretty. In, well, it looks pretty inviting to me. It looks like a nice cup of coffee. Uh, thanks, Luke, and uh, thank you to uh, Craig and Tracy for the wonderful cup, and uh, plus more, which we uh, will show off in future videos. Thanks again, guys. While Andrew is smashing out the silver today, he's just wandered over and said he's got another, another little uh, silver. That be a sixpence this time, mate. You are killing it on the Vanquish 540. Absolutely unreal. What year? You got 19. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> it's a 19 something anyway with the coat of arms. 1948 was it? Ah, good eyes. Good eyes. Not well, bad. Well done. That's what two silvers and. Two silvers and. Four half pennies and a penny. Four half pennies and a penny. Yeah. Killing it. Killing it. Yeah, killing it. That bank is cool. That, it is good. It's a great machine. Yeah, uh, we're uh, we're going to come out and uh, visit out this area too, Andrew, and uh, see if we can have some some of that same success, you mate. Rob me good stuff, are you? I am. <laughs> when you get on the shilling and the florin, I'll be there to pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> so Derek has just brought over our next piece to show off, and uh, I always have trouble explaining or uh, uh, pronouncing what these are called. I just said to Derek, it's the Eastern Lock or Ooshton Lock, <laughs> which is completely wrong. Derek has the uh, the correct answer for me. What was it again, mate? Escussion. Escussion. What a weird name. I prefer Ooshton Lock. <laughs> Ooshton who? It sounds very German, doesn't it? Ooshton. Ooshton Lock. And uh, that to me looks like he may have been off an old suitcase. Remember the big old leather suitcases? Uh, and just the way he's plated, you know, he's got the plate on him and then they've got a little pin in each corner. And if you look on the old leather suitcases, generally this is what they have on them. And the old Ooshton locks, or Ashton locks. What was it? Discussion. Discussion. <laughs> Sounds like discussion. Uh, awesome stuff though. Thanks so much for showing us that, Derek, and a great piece uh, to put in the pouch and take home. Well done, mate. So we were just talking away to Derek there after we found that, uh, or after Derek found that uh, Ooshton lock, a scutcheon. <laughs> I think Ooshton sounds better. Anyway, we were standing here though, and uh, look at what we were just standing on. As soon as Derek walked away and we finished chatting, uh, we got out our next target, and he was a 40, a 45, sort of jumping around a little bit there on the Equinox 900. And look at that, we've got a tiny little Yale padlock. Isn't that magnificent? Now I've found a few of these before, but they're not this small. They are the small, uh, the, the large type variety, I mean. So just uh, just unreal. You know, you just never know what you're standing on. And as I said, I was standing on this guy for about 10 minutes talking to Derek and not knowing what was really under my feet. So awesome stuff. And uh, actually, Andrew found a key there before. Uh, who knows? It may even fit this padlock. I probably doubt it, but uh, you just never know. So we might try and match him up a little bit later. He's in great condition. And I reckon if we did find the key, we'd be able to make him work again. What a ripper. So how good is it to see everybody out on site here? We've just had Craig and Tracy join us from last week. We've got Natisha right in front of us there. Andrew over the back. I can see the boys. I can see the horse nibbles. Uh, we've got Derek over near the gum tree there. 
Uh, we've got David way over the back there finding more marbles and more coins. And uh, something I did not just show either, David just pulled out our first, or the first, a little Australian military button for this side, which is in incredible condition. And then we've got the big guy way over the back there. What's he doing, hey? Finding all those florins, I bet. Uh, we've got Luke from I Dig That 73. He's uh, hunting around looking for my signal, uh, what I told him is a florin. And uh, we've still got him buried in the ground, as you've seen there before. He's hiding under the box thorn hedge. And Luke is none the wiser. <laughs> I keep joking about it. I keep saying, mate, uh, if you find my signal, you're not allowed to dig it out. But as he said, how would I know what is yours? I said, uh, you just find those high signals, mate, and you yell out and I'll come and dig them. Uh, but look, as long as Luke stays away from that uh, little box thorn hedge over there, uh, we know we've got our signal left to dig at the end of the day. And hopefully, it be a florin. So just asking Natisha there how she's been going for the day. And to be honest, uh, I said to her, I haven't actually caught up with you so far today. I think I'm a little bit scared to ask how many silvers you've got, how many coins you've got, because Natisha absolutely smashes on that Equinox 800. Anyway, she does have a really cool piece here. I'm just uh, struggling to keep it in my hands. And uh, she said she's got a little bit of gold gilding and does not want to clean it too much just in case. But straight away I can see uh, like a, a, a kookaburra, or even a King Roy, a bird, sitting up on a, uh, on a branch there, and he's holding a snake in his mouth, which I think is just fascinating. It actually looks like he's sitting on barbed wire. Uh, so look, a, a great little piece, a little badge there, and one for Natisha to clean up once home, and uh, put into her collection. What a great piece. Well, we are still working our way through the rubbish dump. It's funny too, because I've done a lap of this whole site, I think about six laps, and I've made my way back to uh, back to the rubbishy, dumpy area where we started detecting this morning, and where we got out most of the pennies. And look at that, just working around this spot again. I was just standing there talking to Derek, and uh, Derek walked off, and I had a signal there somewhere. I found it, I dug it out, and look what I was rewarded with. A lovely little sixpence. And that be our first one today. Everything else coming out has been smaller. Little thrippences. And I'm not complaining. However, we do sort of need to, uh, to catch up to David there. He is killing the day. A 1942D for Denver. A little sixpence minted over in Denver there. A little sixpence there, though. Coat of arms, Australia. Uh, what a great, great find. Especially to be, uh, to be working through the dump too, you know. Like there is, it is such a trashy area around here. The amount of bottle tops and other rubbish has come out. And to be working through it and finding all these pennies, plus a little sixpence here. I tell you what, it's quite rewarding. So there we go, 1942 sixpence into the pouch, and another one had to show at the end of the day. So we're pushing on into the afternoon now, and uh, I'm sort of wondering whether my sneaky hidden signal is still under the tree here. Luke's a bit of a bit of MIA at the moment. He's right down the riverbank having a splash again. Oh, look at that. It is too. Luke has not found my florin yet. 89, 88, 87. Three bars of depth. That is going to be a florin. And we're going to leave him there for the end of the video and digging up, uh, dig him up and uh, really surprise Luke and hopefully win the day. Did someone say number two? There we go. We've got another little sixpence coming out from uh, this really trashy area, working around the dump. And I'm not too sure of the date. There we go, 1946. He is a little bit worse for wear. He does need a very, very good clean up, this guy. And with that, uh, that dark black patina, I'll zoom in there so you can see better. I dare say he has been through the fire, like a lot of other coins that we're finding around this area. But that's okay though, because he is silver. He will clean up nice and nice and shiny like. And another one to add for the collection at home. Uh, that must be, uh, what, 340, 50 coins now? Coming out from this site. If we keep going, as I said, I reckon we can make it to 400. Rightio, so let's gather around Natisha because she has just found a florin. Oh my God, look at the condition too. That is a stunner. What were you saying this morning too? I remember hearing you, overhearing you say something about your florin was hiding near this, uh, this uh, bush, <laughs> uh, the old pricker bush. And look at that. Natisha has got it out, 1952. So that is number 11 florin for this site now. You've got six. I've got two. Lunny's got one. Natisha's got one. Just incredible. <laughs> I've got none for today either. So, wow. The can. The condition of that is just amazing. Absolutely well done, Natisha. That is so cool. 
Hey, he looks even better in the sun too. Oh, he's gonna clean up amazing. That is awesome. I'm so excited to see so many silver coins coming out from this site and everybody having a great day. So while we're standing over here with Natisha, checking out her lovely florin that she's just found, David has brought over the old lipstick. And uh, this is a cracker because remember what I was saying there before, sometimes you find them complete and that is complete right there. We're going to pull the lid off and we're going to give you a look at the pretty shade of pink. How cool is that? You can just see it there in the sun. But there we go, an intact lipstick. Ooh, I've got some on my thumb. <laughs> an intact lipstick and one that uh, you could still use there, mate. Uh, stop me. Pretty, <laughs> just stop me. <laughs> a, pre a pretty shade of pink for you. That is awesome. Well done. Uh, David with the lipstick and the Tisha with the florin. Just amazing. Well, pretty fascinating, but we've got marbles popping out all over this site today. And uh, Derek has just got the next one. So what's that? Number three, I think it is. Let me zoom in there. Let's have a bit of a look, Ski. Always oh, a nice, clear glass marble. That is awesome. And uh, David's also got two. Uh, who else has got a marble today? Luke, I think, maybe? Or maybe Natisha? No, Andrew. Andrew's got another marble today. Uh, so that is number four marble coming out from this site. And remember, I found that horrible looking burnt one over the back there just last week. Uh, so that is five marbles coming out from this one site. Detectors don't find glass, but you keep your eyes open, and that's what you come out with. Well done, Derek. They hurt. Yeah. It's a prick, isn't it? it is a big prick. Right. Rightio guys, that is about it for us today. We have had a cracker of a day. We've got Luke, we've got Craig, we've got Tracy, we've got Andrew, and we've got Derek, David and Natisha and the boys playing down on the river. And we've all had a fantastic day, but there is one thing left to do. Uh, Luke, do you want to come and see where this uh, target is, mate? We best go dig him out. So you were hunting not too far away from it before there, buddy. However, I strategically placed a big quartz stone on top of it. <laughs> so you would not find that signal. Give me a listen. No, it's mine. So there we go, 87, hiding under the box thorn hedge there. He's a cracker of a signal. <laughs> Luke's gonna have a look with his 800. Ooh. What do you reckon? Ooh. Ooh. You know what? Even Andrew's having a dip with the 540. Who else wants to have a go? Could be a shilly. Well, what I'm going to do, whatever this be, I'm going to give it to Craig and Tracy because they've only just started out there this afternoon. And uh, I would like... Oh, <laughs> oh, look what just come out. Oh, what a cracker. Wow. <laughs> Oh geez, that, that was our signal the whole time. I'll tell you what I said, whatever it be, I'm going to give to Craig and Tracy because they have only just started there this afternoon and uh, they have not found a coin just yet. So I said, whatever this is, we're going to pass it over to Craig and Tracy for them to take something home. There he is in the back. Are we going to get a florin or are we going to get a penny? Let's have a look. Oh, it's a coin. <laughs> what is it? Shilling? Half? David? No freaking idea. No freaking idea. Natisha? Uh, what number was it on there, Uh, 89? Now you're just being confusing. Penny? Craig and Tracy? No idea. No idea? Derek? Penny? Hold your hand out, guys. Oh, you're gonna get dirty hands, That's Tracy. Okay. That's okay. A penny. I was hoping it to be a florin, but there you go, you got a penny to finish it off with, so, or to start off with. How cool. And that uh, that signal, as I said, had been hiding under that box thorn hedge since this morning when I found it, and I did not want to uh, dig it up and give it away. So what we're gonna do now is organize all our finds. Everybody uh, has found something today. We're gonna lay them out on the pouch and give you guys a look and uh, show you exactly what we've done here for round six or round seven. But to be honest, I really can't remember what round we're up to, uh, but we've had some great days. So anyway, uh, we're gonna go, as I said, give you a look through, and then we're gonna head for home.
Rightio guys, so that is about it. As I said, we're going to do a wrap up and show you a look at everybody's finds for today. And now we're going to start off with Luke's from I Dig That 73. Luke was running the Equinox 800 and he's had a cracker of a day. However, no more Florence uh, for Luke today, which is a bit of a shame. And Natisha and David got them all. He's got the old toy cap gun though, a bar ranch written on the side. The old spoon, he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 pennies. Unbelievable. Three little silver thrippences and the awesome old military uniform forces button. Just a ripper. And that is the second one coming out from here today. But the biggest type, biggest type so far. Now, let's move you over to what Andrew did. I'm trying to remember who's is who's here. So Andrew's got the old uh, fork and the spoon there, which is awesome. He's also got the old tyre valve, a part of the old lipstick there, and a few coins laid out on the pouch, including a few silvers. So let me zoom in there. He's got one, two, three, four, five uh, pennies, little uh, key, part of the old cigarette lighter, a few other doodads there, and uh, two sixpences, a little threepence, which looks like uh, to be a coat of arms, very well worn. And also that piece coming from the commemoration pendant handed to school kids. And once home, Andrew can clean this up. And as I said, it says up the top there, presented by the government to the school children of Victoria. So a really, really great piece. So he's had a fantastic day on the Vanquish 540 there behind us. Uh, what we did with the Equinox 900, and we'll jump over. What are you stealing out of my pile, Luke? Uh, there's, that's probably a great piece to display, actually. So anyway, moving over... We've got the run of pennies. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And moving down to the silvers, we had two little sixpences and three threepences. And not to mention the two religious pendants. They both look to be identical too. A little buckle there on each side. A little sash buckle coming off the side there. And uh, also the old, or the, the old and the little a Yale padlock. The little baby padlock. How awesome. So moving forward from what we've done there, uh, what, another 20 odd coins coming out from this site. David, over to you next, mate. What do we got? We've got two marbles, and I love this guy. And uh, this one we did not show before. He's just a cracker though, the old spaghetti looking marble. Uh, we've got the old pretty pink lipstick. Uh, we've got a religious pendant. Also a military a uniform forces button. Uh, we had the 1958 Rue Penny, a couple of little thrippences. Uh, a few little tailor buttons and the big stonker of the 1957 Australian Rue, uh, Australian Florin. I was going to call it a Rue Penny. It's certainly not. Uh, so awesome stuff. And um, also a bit of cutlery. And David's been running the, where is it? Equinox 800, uh, the machine that I've borrowed out. What do you reckon about the Equinox, Dave? It goes all right. It goes all right. Normally a gold hunter, but uh, no, that was pretty impressive. Pretty good yeah. fun. Enjoyed yep. it. Uh, we'll go for round two again very soon, mate. And I'll tell you what, those marbles and the florin, uh, I mean, they are bucket listers and, and the military button. Uh, so you've come out you've come out today, you've got a couple of bucket listers, you've got the florin as a bucket lister and even the military button. So you have actually absolutely smashed it. Well done, mate. Well done. No worries. We'll move over. You can hear that rain starting to set in. We're going to move over and we're going to look at Natisha's finds now. And I know it's Natisha's finds because she's got the lovely little badge up there with the Kingfisher bird. I think I said King Roy there before. It's not. It's Kingfisher bird. I was just saying that all the way uh, around the wrong way. A couple of little thrippences though. Once again, Natisha had the lovely uh, big stonker florin, 1952. And that is the second florin coming out from this site today. Uh, the old uh, high school badge, the little Kingfisher a badge with the gold gilding on him holding the snake which is just a cracker uh, we've got a couple of pennies or three pennies down below uh, the old silver plated spoon with a bit of uh, detail up the top there looks like a little wallaby or a possum or something uh, we also had the rue pennies down below the half rue pennies so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten copper pennies all together uh, we had the top of the old salt pepper shaker which is just awesome and a few little lipstick pieces you can see this guy is actually the older type design and this is the one that you push up and down with your thumbnail and the later type design uh, they come out with the twist bottom uh, so that is a great piece and not only that uh, Natisha's also found the old uh, lead horse rosette and also a little what I presume to be musket ball uh, so an awesome day for Natisha running the 800 now let's uh, where are we going now we've got um, Luke's machine 
uh, we've got Tracy and Craig's machine. We'll go over to the back here. And this is now Derek's, uh, Derek's lot of finds that he's had with the brand new Mind Lab Manicore. Uh, so he's got the Oostin lock. What's it called, Derek? Discussion. Discussion. I knew that. A discussion lock? No. <laughs> discussion lock. Uh, but I'd prefer to call it the Oostin lock because I think that sounds cool. Uh, also the shutter lens, I presume, out of the old camera, which is a great piece and we can ID a little bit further for future. A part of the old little buckle, uh, once again a great piece. Uh, Derek's got three pennies, three Commonwealth pennies too, funnily enough. Oh no, more down here. And uh, three Rue pennies, there we go, I was, I was missing those guys. And not only that, he has the Ripper little marble. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised because, you know, three marbles coming out of here today and all the times that I've been digging here prior and all the hundreds of holes I've dug, I've only found one. So uh, the, the ratio is a little bit off there. And we also had the little lead weight, the dress, he, uh, dress lead hem weight, which is really cool, holding down the, the ladies' dresses. A few other little miscellaneous pieces, uh, pieces there. And uh, what I think is really cool is the old fob watch backing plate. And you can see there, 11th of the 5th, 37. So I dare say that's 11th of the 5th, 1937. And it's got some initials there, which Derek can clean up and try and ID once home. He's done a great job. And a few, a two or a 10 cent coin. And the first, get this right, the first a brown coin, the first one and two cent coin to come out of here, the first brown bugger. How awesome is that? As all the uh, all the rue pennies and everything found here, you would think we would have been digging through a ton of those guys, but there you go, there's the first. Now, moving over, last but not least, is what Craig and Tracy did. And as I said, they were a bit late out the gate. Uh, they went and watched the footy there this morning, watched their grandson play football, and uh, you know, coming out to the paddock there a little bit later, well, we had a few hours up our sleeve uh, on Craig and Tracy. And so they're not as much to show, however, some great little items there. A part of the old Fobwatch backing plate, a Fobwatch uh, backing cover there, or the, uh, the bracket I should say, the internal piece, and also the Rue Penny that we pulled out from the box on hedge, another one for them to clean up and enjoy in future. So anyway, what a cracker of a day. As you can see, the wind and the rain is starting to pick up, and so we're about to pack up and get out of here. And uh, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed. So look, we've, uh, we've still got a little bit more work to do at this site in future. I'm certain there's more coins to be found here. However, I think we've smashed it today and the last five, six times that we've been here. Uh, over, what, 250, 300 coins coming out so far. Who knows if we're going to make it to the 400. But if we keep, uh, keep putting the time and the effort in, I'm sure we will. So anyway, guys, think lucky, dig clean, happy hunting. Hit that like, comment, subscribe button, and I hope to see you next time. What do you reckon, guys? Back for round seven, eight next time? Yeah, yeah bloody oath. And we'll catch you then. Cheers.